It took precisely two words to convince me to read The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. Library Labyrinth. Seriously, say less. I am sold. I went immediately to pick this book up. I am reading this purely for the setting or the atmosphere, so we'll see how it goes. Prepare yourself for some very mesmerizing library ambiance because I found some killer ambiance on YouTube as a background for my reading. I have reached page 125, which means I am on chapter 15 in The Book That Wouldn't Burn. I have the uh, dust jacket here on display for my dark academia shelves. So now that I am 20% of the way in, I thought this would be a good point to do a check-in and tell you a little bit about the plot because this video will remain spoiler free. So I can't really spoil too much in the first 20%. We have two alternating POVs. First, we meet a young girl named Lavira. She is an outspoken, feisty little troublemaker that lives in this place called The Dust. It's kind of like the outskirts of town, very poverty-stricken. Lavira's village is attacked by some creatures. A lot of people are killed, and all of the children are taken hostage. Eventually, she's taken to the city, like the center city, to be allocated, which means she, along with a bunch of other children, are going to be assigned their roles in life. Some are designated to be servants for nobles, some are designated to study in a university, and Lavira doesn't have a formal education. She cannot read, she cannot write, but she is incredibly intelligent. For example, she has great math skills. So it's really interesting to see where she is going to be placed. Then we have Ever, who lives in the library labyrinth along with his siblings. And two guardian type creatures Ever is trapped in this library labyrinth with his siblings. And it's interesting because time doesn't seem to exist. It is always bright and they have no idea how much time has gone by and they don't have memories of their lives before they got here. It's all just kind of fuzzy for them. Now with Ever's point of view, I really struggled because there's something called the mechanism, which I think is like a portal because we see these creatures coming through the mechanism that uh, want them all dead. So they're very, very dangerous. But I'm really confused with what the mechanism does and how he and his siblings go into it and spend some time there or this is where they originated from. I'm really not quite sure what the mechanism is, what its abilities are or how it plays a role in the story. And so I'm feeling kind of stupid <laughs> when I'm reading this because I'm just not following along. I don't think you're supposed to be confused. I think I'm supposed to know what this is at this point. So eh. if the mystery of this library labyrinth wasn't enough, we have another one because Ever comes across this book. It's really mysterious. And when he opens up the cover, there's a message to him. It says, Ever, don't turn the page. I'm stuck in the exchange. Come find me at the bottom or something along those lines. So first of all, he's so tempted to turn the page. Like if you tell someone not to do something, Ever has some great restraint to not turn this page. And I wonder if he's going to end up doing that and what's gonna happen. But he, it kind of is embarking on this mission and he doesn't really understand why, how, what, who, but he just has this drive in him and it 
quite possibly is linked to this book. So I am super engaged in this story. Even if I'm a little confused in Evers POV, I'm hoping if I keep reading, maybe Mark Lawrence will just restate what this mechanism is and we'll learn more about it. I'll see more of it so then it'll all click for me because that I'm finding a little bit frustrating. And uh, Lavira, I'll talk more about her when we do the analysis at the end, but yeah, my feelings about her are kind of ping pong back and forth. So I am excited to keep going. I feel like there's so much story here and it is giving me this atmospheric vibe that I wanted with a library labyrinth. So I'm excited to keep going. We're back now that I've finished the book and I want to talk about a couple different elements of it and then my overall thoughts. I want to talk about the atmosphere or the setting, which is the reason I picked this up, the writing style, the plot, and the characters. So let's go ahead and dive into my review. Starting off with the atmosphere, and this really encompasses the setting, the world building, the magic, because in this book, the setting itself of the library is the magic, is the world, so I'm kind of combining all of those terms into atmosphere when I'm discussing this. And let's address the major question. So I picked this up because I expected a truly atmospheric read with this library labyrinth. So what did I think of it? I loved it. This has to be one of my favorite atmospheres or settings that I've ever read. I will keep my review spoiler free, of course, but it's not a spoiler to read a section to you from page 139 that describes the library. Lavera hadn't known what to expect, but she thought there would be some kind of preamble, some kind of lead up to the books. She'd been wrong. The doorway opened into a chamber that dwarfed the cavern they'd taken several minutes to cross. The ceiling vaulted a hundred yards and more above their heads, and bookshelves divided the acreage of the floor into a sprawling labyrinth. The floor plan reminded her of both the city outside and of the confusion of worm tracks in the mud after one of the eight or nine rains that had fallen in her lifetime. It was possible to observe these similarities because the door that had just vanished wasn't at ground level, but rather halfway up the chamber wall at the top of a long, wide flight of steps leading down to the left. And whilst the shelves were extremely tall, none of them reached as high as 50 yards. Just to walk along every aisle would require weeks. There might be 500 miles of shelving, all of it reaching up far higher than a man. 
So that is one of several descriptions that talks about just this vast library. There's different chambers, there's all these different like structures to the to the books, to the aisles. It was truly amazing. Obviously I loved the labyrinth type setting of this library and the descriptions. However, talking about the magic system in this world, there are portals all throughout the library. And that is where it kind of lost me because it got way too sci-fi for me. The portals and the areas in which they led to just got pretty ridiculous to me as the book went on and kind of made me roll my eyes, get confused, and lose interest a little bit. But I am also happy to report that this had some great dark academia vibes in the setting. I had my suspicions that maybe it would because, I mean, we're in a library, but it did have more of that studying element and academic colleagues and professors or teachers and gaining knowledge. So I did really like that addition to the atmosphere. Now let's talk about the writing style of this book. So I mentioned already that we have dual POVs um, and I mentioned that it had good dark academia vibes. However, the writing failed to really emphasize a love of reading or knowledge. There were a couple passages though that did hint to this. On page 179 we are in Evers POV, but there was something about the number of choices that paralyzed him. Rather like when it came to choosing a new book from the stacks, the knowledge that he couldn't possibly read all the books on offer put a peculiar pressure on his choosing his next read. There must be diamonds out there, the best book in a thousand, the best book in a million. And surely he didn't want to waste his time reading one that was merely adequate when he could be reading one of these diamonds. So instead, he often wasted his time hunting for a read instead of reading. I mean, that captures the struggle of every book lover. The knowledge that we can't read every book out there and the pressure of reading something that isn't like a five star. I love that passage. On page 348, we are with Lavira and she's going on a mission to go get the books and return them to the library. Lavira enjoyed bringing back the books that had spent longest journeying out in the world. Perhaps a rogue volume passed from friend to friend, home to home, across the city. One story finding root in scores of brains, its characters becoming friends to dozens of readers, discussed in their drawing rooms, thrown into new adventures in the minds of strangers. Or maybe a tome that had waited in one small office all those years, bathed in the same pipe smoke, polished by the same hands, too precious to be returned, simply waiting for its temporary new owner to lose interest or more likely to age and die. Or a journal that had traveled far beyond the walls, sailed the seas she would never lay eyes upon, and come to rest in a distant city of spires and spice, or log roofs and relentless snows. They all came back in time. I love that. There were also some well-written philosophical moments, usually from the master librarians, and this one in particular, page 308, is from Master Logaris. Truth? We deal in affirmation. People don't want truth. They say they do, but what they mean is that they want the truth to agree with them. Take 99 books that say one thing and one that says the opposite. If that opposite was what the customer was hoping to hear, they'll put their stock in the single volume. In this manner, we learn more regarding human nature from closed books than from anything that might be written within them. Wow, that is a pretty cool point. Those are just some of the passages that I enjoyed. So I did really jive with the writing style of Mark Lawrence, even if it failed to really ignite this love of reading or put into words how I feel about reading throughout the entire book, there were still some sections I definitely appreciated. Now I wanna talk about the plot. In my check-in, I did an overview of the plot at that point because I didn't wanna spoil anything and I still won't, but I think the direction in which the plot went is kind of where it lost me. So I loved the atmosphere, I liked the writing style, but the plot I think is what disconnected me. I mentioned that there was this mechanism in Ever's world that really confused me. And just when I thought I understood it, there would be a different context talking about the mechanism and it would lose me all over again. On page 274 we have a summary of the description. So Ever is talking about 
his experience with it, his and his siblings. So he says, Mayland, then me, then Carol, then Starball were all lost in the mechanism as young children and decades passed and we didn't come back. In the end, Sabres came and killed everyone, except Clovis, who was put into the mechanism by her mother with a book that turned out to be all about physical combat. And the mechanism swallowed her too. I think the assistant made it happen to protect her. More years passed, enough for even the bones of the dead to vanish. And then, for reasons known only to the library, the mechanism spat out five kids, which were us, and even though the others say it felt like they'd spent 10 years or more wandering inside the book that they took with them, none of us were much older than seven or eight. And all that was over a decade ago. Okay, so the mechanism is a portal where you go inside of the book that you're carrying and time freezes. So however long you spend in the mechanism, time freezes. So that is the understanding I went through the book with, but it, the mechanism comes up in other situations that kind of like contradict that or confuse me. And yeah, the mechanism was always a sticking point for me. The plot also spans 10 years from when Lavira is 10 years old up until she is around 20. And I think that element of the plot, like that time frame, is part of the reason I disconnected because everything was so condensed or we spoke of things retrospectively rather than experiencing it with the character. I don't I don't know. It was just this plot and then there was a, a plot twist which okay to be fair I did not see this plot twist coming or some of these reveals that happened so that was that was kind of neat and unexpected unpredictable but um I don't like the direction it went. I really don't and I think that's because you know I was talking about the atmosphere how it took a sci-fi vibe and that element of the plot like with all these portals that's really where it lost me I didn't like the direction I felt it got a little bit ridiculous the other element that I struggled with in the book that wouldn't burn is the characters I failed to connect with either Lavera or ever and since we follow Lavera from when she's 10 to 20 when she's younger, she has serious little sister vibes. I mean, which can be expected. She was just very stubborn, very outspoken, asked a ton of questions, kind of obnoxious, and it frustrated me a little bit. Um, she did grow out of it a lot, but I couldn't connect with her. I saw potential for found family. Both Lavera and Ever have this close-knit group of people. So we have Ever with his siblings, and we have Lavera with her colleagues I guess you can say and they both care very deeply about their crews right and when their crew is in danger like they want to help them and so I think Mark Lawrence was going for a found family vibe but I didn't feel the chemistry between all these characters I think it would have been a lot better if I was connected to these relationships and these side characters but I I just I couldn't now for my overall thoughts on the book that wouldn't burn by Mark Lawrence well, I would categorize this as type 2 fun, which is a term that I use to mean I did not enjoy the reading process of this book. It took me, I think, like two weeks or two and a half weeks to read, which is strange for me because I normally read a book like over two or three days. I just really did not want to pick it up or I would read until like the page break, so maybe like three pages, and put it down for a long time. I just couldn't sink my teeth into this as much as I wanted. I thought, because I love the atmosphere of the library labyrinth so much, that I would just sink into this book and let it devour me and, and be totally in this world. And that just didn't happen to me. And again, I think that's because the plot went in a direction that I did not like. And also I couldn't connect with the characters in this book because the writing style and the atmosphere were really cool. If I knew that this book had the element of portal magic, I don't think that would have turned me off to the book. As a kid, I liked, oh gosh, what was it called? A Wrinkle in Time, which I, I think that's like a portal fantasy book, right? I don't know if I would have turned away from it, but I also can't think of any other situations where I've liked portal magic. It's just, like I said, too sci-fi for me, not really into it. But even though I did not enjoy the reading process of this book, reflecting back on it, I kind of dig it because I forget about all that stuff I didn't like. And what sticks out in my head is this really unique 
atmosphere, the setting, the magic of the labyrinth, all the different things that our characters encounter when they're in this library is so cool. There's like assistants and there's finders and they're just the whole fact that it's like nobody knows how big this library is. There's different chambers and they're never ending. It's so cool to conceptualize this or try to. I mean the fact that you can't imagine how big it is is just in itself really fun. So the visualization of the library was a fun experience and that's what I remember looking back on this. So I would say that I liked the book and I do think I would recommend it. I think for fans that like more of the sci-fi element this will be right up your alley that like dark academia I think you'll like it. Um, yeah it was it was an interesting read but like I said I'm remembering that library and that is so cool. Would I want to visit this library? No I'm kind of terrified. Kind of terrified to visit it. I'd be so scared I'd get lost. <laughs> I'd be like one of the lost ones whose remains are like never found. Uh, I don't have the best survival skills. So I don't think I'd want to visit the library, but reading about it, now that I can handle. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in this reading vlog book review of The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. I will see you in the next video.